Uh, my name's Gordon Rupp. Um, I'm going to show you how to remove the wheels and the tongue off the building. When you get your building, it's going to come with two real important tools. We call this an accessory, a lifting accessory, and then a high lift jack. It'll come in a box like this. To work the jack, this lever here, when it's in that down position, it allows you to lower it. Or if you want to raise your building, you pull up on it. It's kind of how that jack works. Um, this tool is what allows you to lift the back end of the building. There's nowhere for this jack to hook onto the building, so you need this. It slides in the rear end of it into that slot there. You want to make sure it's in all the way. And rule of thumb is you always want to lower the front of the building first. If we were to raise the back end, that whole building would be balancing on this front wheel. So if we lower the front, it'll have the building, the width of the building keeping it stable. Another thing you want to watch for is you never want the high lift jack to be here. In order to lower this building, we gotta spin this wheel, and I'll show you how to do it. So you always wanna jack it from the opposite side of this jack. If you notice, I pulled up on it. At this point, I can raise it and get it to where I need it. And you always kinda want two people when you're doing this job. Um, one to jack and the other one to remove the wheels and spin, spin the, the other jack. Um, we'll have Andrew jack it we usually will only like go up like two notches. I mean, that's high enough right there. One notch is oodles. It's always best to keep the building as low as you can get it. At this point, I, if you notice, I put the handle here. I rotate this wheel just so they're out of the way when we lower it on the ground. He'll kick this lever down. Now it's in the position to, to go down. As you notice, he's bringing it down. He's holding on to everything. Um, it's real important to just keep a tight handle or hand on the jack, keep it stable. If you were to let go of this handle, it, it could go all by itself. Which can be dangerous. So always hold on to everything. If you notice, um, he's got it down all the way now. When we lift the back end of the building, it's not resting on that wheel. It's just, it's got more stability. So now we'll go to the back end. He's only gonna raise this a couple notches. It's all you need to do. And that's just a, a safety. Other than get it real high off the ground, there's no need for it. I can always kind of check if it's high enough, if I can start to spin the wheels. So at this point, he's there. You can stop right there. If you do notice, the building will rock, um, but it'll, it will land. If I take that wheel out, it will bottom out on this part. So don't be alarmed if your building does rock back and forth. It's still very safe. Um, Andrew's still, of course, holding the jack. You'll, wa you'll see it rock as soon as I pull this out. Underneath here, I'm pulling a set of pins and a, a cotter pin. This is what holds the tire into place. At this point, I, I slide the wheel assembly out. If you notice, the building is rocking, but it is landing on that, on the front. I usually always pin this stuff as soon as I pull it out, just so I don't lose it. Now I'll go around to this opposite side. You notice I'm back under here. I'm pulling the pin. Slide the wheel out. At this point, now Andrew's ready to lower it the rest of the way and have it sit on the ground. Once he's got that all the way lowered, this will slide right out, but we still have that tongue in the front that we need to remove. It's held on the same way, it's just 
We use a large pin to hold it in place. You just slide that out, grab it, and this will just slip right on out. Now, if we wanted to put the wheels back on, first thing we do is slide this into place. If we were to lift up the back end first, there would be such an angle on this that I couldn't get this in there. So you always want to put the tongue in first. Then we go to the back of the building, slide our accessory tool in. At this point, I'll, I'll step up and try to put this tire in, just so I know when he's high enough, I can tell him to stop. I can tell he still needs to go a few more notches. At this point, I slide the wheel in, take my pin, I can locate my hole. One thing I always do, even though I have it pinned, I always pull on this tire because I'll show you on the other side. At this point, I'll always pull on this. make sure that I did run the pin through this axle. So if we come around here, you'll notice that this hole is pretty close to the end. It's really easy for me to pin it. Let's say I, I thought I had it slid in far enough. I slide it through that axle and I actually miss the hole. But it fills pin, that's why I pull on it. The wheels always track. If you notice, I could have put it in this way or reverse. You always want it to track kind of like a motorcycle on a, like the swing arm on a bike. You always want the wheels at its furthest point back. At this point, I, I shove the pin through. Put the cotter key in, pull on that wheel again. I know I pinned it through that axle. Andrew's now gonna lower it. Now we want to go around to the front and raise it up so you can roll it around or hook it on a vehicle. If I had not put this in, right now there's weight on the front of this. So you always want to make sure you put this tongue assembly in. There's no way that if I'd raised the back end first, I could slide this in, the angle changes. So always remember to put this in first. I like to, uh, at this point, instantly start spinning this wheel. He'll know when it's high enough rather than over, over jack it too high. If you notice that, that clicked. Once it was high enough, this pin popped in and it's stable. You can also look on the back side. You'll know that the pin did go through. Um, it's back on its wheels, ready to go.